The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live in Atlanta for the OpenStack Summit. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angel, joined by my co-host Stu Miniman, analyst at wikibon.org. And uh, Stu, one of the things we love about theCUBE is we have to go out to the events and uh, get all the data we possibly can and interview as many people as possible, stay out late at night to all the parties and talk to all the thought leaders. And it's great to have John Engage, the CTO of Rackspace, back on theCUBE. Uh, has you know, been involved in the, on the technical side, in the industry. Great to have you back and get your perspective. Thank you for having me. Um, so uh, OpenStack obviously is, is really rocking strong. I mean, obviously the, the, the hype and the buzz and the activity uh, is all there. I mean, seeing it all play out, the Kool-Aid injections at the parties, people are pumped. Yeah, It absolutely. really is exciting. So I want to get your take on that. I mean, obviously Rackspace, the, the genesis of, of the whole OpenStack uh, movement really yeah. came from you guys. And then you guys did collaborated yep. very well with partners and, and then got it off up and running and, and, and really incubated and bootstrapped the whole thing and made it all happen, so congratulations. But what's your take on it right now? What's, this, what's the state of the OpenStack community right now? Well, honestly, I couldn't be more excited about OpenStack, the community, the conference that we're here at, you know, we're here at today. I think it's just uh, really cool to see where we've come from and how far we've come in really just four years. Um, the conference, I heard the numbers, somewhere around 4,700 people uh, here. I think Rackspace has almost 300 people, so we're, you know, we're here in force. Um, you know, to represent our, uh, you know, kind of angle on the on the OpenStack cloud. We're participating in a lot of um, uh, sessions and speaking. I have a lot of speakers here. And it's just great to see the community uh, getting stronger every day. People actually, uh, you know, new vendors showing up every day. We see a lot of new faces down on the show floor down there. Lots of new people uh, bringing new solutions to the market. And, and that's really, uh, that's great for all of us. It's really been fun and since I started Silicon Angle, roughly in the middle of 09, um, uh, was the beginning. You guys, talking to Jim Curry and the folks down mm -hmm. there, Brett and, and, and whatnot, we're really looking at the OpenStack, it wasn't even on the table yet, it was really you guys right. going to cloud. Right. You know, obviously big footprint as a company. Right. And you wanted to onboard developers and then you know, Amazon was obviously, you know, established themselves very well at the sure. time. But you guys really, really set this up. And we pointed out to, to Troy on the first day, um, and Stu asked the question, kind of a loaded question, did Rackspace fumble the opportunity to get the leadership uh, you know, halo effect? And yeah. you know, we gave you guys props, and I want to say it again to you, because I think what you guys did was very bold. You basically stepped back for the betterment of the community. Yeah. You really could have land grabs. Yeah, and well look, we, we had to. I mean, people, uh, people wouldn't, it wouldn't be as strong of a community today if we tried to smother it and hold on to it and keep it all for ourselves. I mean, that's not how you build a great community. That's how you, you know, uh, you know that, that's a long shot if you try to go that route. Um, you know, if you were in the keynote on uh, Monday, you saw Troy uh, Toman sit, you know, stand up and speak about uh, OpenStack and the vision. It wasn't a sales pitch. It wasn't something that was kind of um, uh, too commercial. It was really about laying out a vision for this community over the long term. And we've tried to do that all along. We've tried to be a good citizen within the community. We've tried to take our role uh, of a big operator uh, as part of our contribution, lots of code as well, but you know, one of the unique things for us is that we run a massive open, you know, OpenStack based cloud and we have a lot to offer in terms of, of running it. I think you know, being a good citizen is a big deal. Well, I want to make sure we continue to reiterate that because there's a lot of noise going on right now. We'll get that in a second, but you guys have done a great job and you guys have a lot of experience you've grown from. It. It's been good for the brand, it's been good for the business. Wall Street might not value it yeah. yet, but that's a whole nother discussion. Well, they get in a hurry, yeah. that's the challenge. They, you know, they, they want instant results. And, yeah. I, and I, you think about how long certain technologies have taken in the market. But virtualization didn't happen overnight. It's got a foothold yeah. in the enterprise but it certainly didn't happen in one or two years, four years, whatever, it took 10 plus years. I mean, this uh, is a multi-decade opportunity. Yeah. I still think it's even not even national anthem time at this point. You're seeing, I was talking to the ex-Gardner analyst now at Red Hat, and, and, and we, we both agree, until you start to see those metrics out right. there where you're saying, it's not about lines of code anymore, it's about market share and TAM and all these other business metrics, then you have an industry. But right now, you guys have been part of, and now the community has really got a solid foundation. It looks like this will build a whole new industry. Yeah, I mean, this, it's the, the direction all of IT is going. It's, you know, it's not, it's not going to happen open, overnight. This is not a uh, 
you know, flavor of the month um, social network where you, you know, all the users switch from one to the other. I mean, this is a major platform shift that's going on in a, in a massive industry, and that stuff takes time. And I, I see it every day. More and more companies you saw here at the conference, very big name companies making big bets on OpenStack, and they're not doing that for fun. They're doing it because they see a vision down the road of real use of that platform, that technology, uh, at, at enterprise scale across their entire business. All new applications are being built in an agile way, and they need OpenStack to be the foundation for that kind of uh, shift. All right, so, so John, you, know, you told me there's almost 300 rackers here at right. the show. Um, I, I'm wondering if you could help explain to the audience out there, um, you know, there's so many projects out there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where, where do you see kind of the, the maturity of the various projects and, you know, where, where are the rackers spending their time, right. uh, you know, helping to, helping to mature and helping to build different pieces? Yeah. Um, well, look, I think there, there are a number of projects, you're right, uh, there, that's sometimes actually a little overwhelming for a new a new user or a new uh, customer of OpenStack, but the, the kind of foundational products are, you know, uh, Nova for compute, Swift, um, you know, those are the or oldest and the original and the ones that almost everybody knows and, and uh, the, certainly the, the ones that are sort of, sort of the foundation of, of OpenStack. There's a lot of new projects though emerging. I mean, we have a team here that's very excited about a project called Trove, which is database as a service. We have a uh, team that's working hard on uh, the project called Heat, which is the orchestration, uh, making sure you can deploy applications easily into OpenStack clouds. Um, we have guys working on, guys and girls, I should say. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of female rackers here, too. We, so we, we, had, we had Nikki, your <laughs> evangelista, Nikki. on uh, right. I use week. the word guys, you know, sort of generically, but, you know, there, there's a, there's a cross-section here. Uh, the, uh, you know, the, the different projects that are emerging are all very exciting. Sometimes, you know, you, you with, with a, project like OpenStack and a company like Rackspace, you really can't dictate to developers what to work on. They're gonna, they're gonna go, you know, gravitate to the things that they get excited about. And where, you know, whatever they're uh, involved in has to be sort of their passion. Because this is, you know, this is open source. It's, it's, a, it's a labor of love. And, and I think, um, you know, we see a develop, you know, our developers really go in a lot of different directions, but mostly further up the stack. I mean, there's a lot of the foundational stuff that's pretty well baked at this point. And yes, we've got to continue to, help scale it and, and make it more efficient and make it more solid and upgradable and those kinds of things. But the fun stuff for a lot of the developers tends to be things like uh, you know, integration with a container technology like Docker or uh, you know, work on, like I mentioned, uh, maybe big data uh, as a service, you know, something like that. So. Yep. so talk about some of the trends you're seeing. Obviously, you know, we were talking before we came on, you know, the buzz on the hallways is heat. Uh, you mentioned Docker and the containers, obviously, is an undercurrent, certainly, in the show. May not be on the top billing in terms of, you know, themes. Certainly, it's been got a lot of action on the crowd chat. What are you seeing uh, this at this show that's the, in the hallways, the conversations in the hallways? Um, well, look, I think, uh, I think that there's constant uh, debates about every, I'm trying to, trying to pick out one thing that uh, sort of stands out. I mean, you know, heat has come up a lot. I mean, every racker I talk to uh, is talking about that. Um, there was a, a container uh, event down the hall that was standing room only, people couldn't even get in. Um, the, the bare metal, uh, as a, you know, as a service, being able to roll out bare metal servers with Ironic is kind of a, a, a next, next wave, I think, for clouds. People want to go and, and really get the, the best performance out of it. Um, you know, lots of um, interest in, in applications on top. Uh, you know, the, I, I mentioned database, big data, um, just really, you know, f further up the stack and, and, and getting into the application space. A lot of developers here, and this is basically a DevOps show. We were commenting yesterday on our summary. I mean, it's not billed as a DevOps show, but you know, yeah. this is DevOps guys, right? Right. Um, what's your take on DevOps? Obviously, you guys are a DevOps company, certainly the, with your efforts and your work, what you've learned and what you've overcome and built. Uh, you have servicing customers, uh, but not all customers actually want to be DevOps, they yeah. want you know, maybe called cloud ops. Yeah. But it, 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 can DevOps translate? I mean, certainly it will from, as, a, as a matter of architecture and, and principle. It's a, it's a concept and a, and a revolution, but what, what has to happen to, to make the ninjas of DevOps that, you know, that I call the top 1% of right. developers, which I would classify as DevOps, they're really kicking ass. And then to, the, to what I call mainstream developers, where mm -hmm. the automation's there, you mentioned the heat, that's orchestration. These are the things that are being worked on. Right. What's it take for an enterprise to have the, the best of DevOps without all the work? Well, I think, um, you know, for us, we're, we as a company have been using DevOps uh, kind of strategies for deploying our cloud and 
scaling our application stacks and, and making sure that we're uh, you know, using all the latest best practices in terms of um, you know, building modern software, uh, agile, uh, you know, that, that sort of methodology. But um, you know, enterprises, they want to go fast too. They want to build things like the startups do. They want to bring in some of that innovative, innovative spirit. They want to attract the same kinds of developers that the startups can grab, um, and they want to bring them into their, their shop. And so I think that's what's driving a lot of the interest in OpenStack. It gives you a solid foundation for you to do the kind of automation that DevOps is really all about, making sure you can automate the deployment of applications, the scale out and scale back of applications, making sure that you're uh, building uh, a very templatized way of, of deploying. You know, Rackspace is taking it one step further, not only giving customers that foundation, but also the services to go with it. We've been a company uh, for in our entire history that was about what we call fanatical support, which is services and expertise and uh, helping customers make transitions as technology shifts. Well, we're doing that yet again with, with uh, DevOps. DevOps is sort of our next flavor of fanatical support. It's the way we're going to help companies uh, adopt the technologies they want to do, whether it's Chef or Ansible. We're using both of those technologies in our DevOps automation service. We're using New Relic as a tool on top to help customers monitor their applications at a deep layer. Uh, lots, of, lots of other open source tools that we're trying to bring together. What we find is that companies have a hard time having all of that expertise on one small team. And oftentimes it is a small team. You know, even with an enterprise, the innovative uh, developer team is sometimes a handful of people, and they want to adopt these same sort of methodologies, and so we're, we're really bringing that to them as a uh, capability that we can help accelerate that whole adoption process. So, so, so John, can, can you speak a little bit to what does it take to attract you know, train and, and keep you know the, the, those type of people. You know, it yep. seems critical thing at this show. Everybody is hiring, mm -hmm. and you know, get, getting some of those. Uh, so somebody made a comment. You know, getting a dancing unicorn is tough. Somebody that yep. can not only manage all the infrastructure but also code. I mean, that, that's, that's a right. tough skill set. So you know, Rackspace has been doing this a long time. How do you guys do it? What advice are you giving to enterprises? Yeah. Well, look, I think um, you know, for us, we've always thought about the culture, the environment that these. Racker, we call them rackers. Where, where do they have to come to work every day? Who do they have to work with? What kind of conditions do they work under? All of those things matter. And when you're competing for good talent, I mean, you really have to set a, a good stage for them to do their best work. I mean, these people are very creative. Uh, they have, you know, the different work styles. They like to work in different, you know, kind of a different hour sometimes than than the uh, average worker. You know, you you can't uh, put too many constraints because that kind of stifles the whole creativity of being a developer. And it, it is a very creative process, and you have to get into the zone, and you have to do a lot of things that uh, you know, typical business guys just don't understand. So we've tried very hard to build a great culture for engineers and uh, developers to do their best work. Uh, we let them choose a lot of the, their own tools. That really matters. It would be like telling an artist you have to use this particular type of paintbrush. Well, that's not going to work. He's going to use whatever he wants. He's going to use the tools that make uh, for, a, for a great outcome. And I think having a little bit of flexibility rather than being so strict and so prescriptive and so uh, you know, kind of stiff in the way that you uh, do IT, which is how, you know, for many years it was all about control, 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 locking things down and keeping you know, shadow IT at bay. And, and I think you kind of need to let things go a little bit and let people go uh, have, a little, um, have a little faith in people that they can make the right decisions. Put a few guardrails around it, but, but give them the tools that they want to use, the technologies that they like, let them be creative. Okay, so sp speaking of tools, uh, you know, you mentioned Heat is one of the projects that are out there. Uh, you know, when I think about Rackspace mm -hmm. and a lot of the service providers out there, it's how we manage the entire system uh, that, that often is what's differentiating them. Um, can, can you talk to, you know, what, what, what have you guys seen from an evolutionary standpoint as to how you operationalize your environment, uh, you know, and yeah. I, I know you've helped, uh, you know, many customers, you know, adopt from a private cloud environment the, the Rackspace operational right. model. So can, can you get, walk us through what that journey's been the last couple of years? What, what What's changed and where's it yeah. going? Yeah, well, look, in the early days of Rackspace, um, you know, we did, we did a lot of things by hand. IT was a, was a uh, you know, it was something that, was, you know, was done like a craftsman. You put a server in the rack, you manage that server over time, you pay close attention to that server. Uh, you know, they use this analogy of pets versus cattle. We had a lot of pets back in those days. Um, you know, nowadays, when we deploy, we deploy a fleet of servers, we deploy racks of servers that are already pre-configured, pre-cabled, pre-racked, 
Uh, we roll them into the data center at large scale. Uh, we don't do, the, do anything a server at a time anymore. And so uh, when you do that, it ha gives you opportunities for a lot more automation. You can write one script that will populate all those servers with the right hypervisor and the right image and the right operating system and the right IP address space and then, then go back and look at the database and now you've got all of this uh, you know, capacity that you can go use as part of your cloud. That has fundamentally changed the way we do things in the data center. And then what that enables is all of your engineers and developers and architects to go do the same thing up in the software tier. You know, the way we uh, build software is now much more automated in terms of the testing and the deployment process. And I mean, we talked about DevOps a minute ago, and that's really at the heart of it is, is sort of automating the entire pipeline of going from an idea to something deployed in production. And, and then if something goes wrong, you, you, know, you roll right back because you've got... Um, you know, you've got the blueprints, you've got the, the uh, uh, checkpoints along the way. So that, that's changed a lot for us. So John, uh, I, you wrote a blog post leading up to, uh, to, to the show here talking about some of those public cloud providers sure. and what, what many have called the race to zero. Yep. Um, can, can, can you share with us, you know, you, you, has, your changing, has your thinking changed at all from what you're hearing at the show? Um, you know, you know how, how do you differentiate going yeah. forward? And, it's uh, actually you know, reinforced for me uh, that what I wrote in the blog post is, is really very true. People um, look out there at the market and say, you know, there's big cloud guys that are dropping prices. I mean, that literally is the lever that they're using to try to compete with one another. When you're using that lever, you're truly trying to tell the world that it's a commodity. You know, it's, it's uh, trying to make a, an apples to apples comparison with your product and somebody else's. And, and just, you know, uh, if you have that scale of, to be able to do that, that's fine, but it isn't really a differentiating uh, dimension, it's just, it's just one cent lower. I think the opportunity for companies is to figure out what they're really good at, what's their game, and play their game. That, that's what yeah, we're so, doing. So, so just to poke at that a little bit, you know, sure. I, I think at, you know, Amazon's got Redshift uh, that, that they're sure. growing, uh, you know, Google has their application engine that they're doing a lot on top of it, so the public cloud guys are building services. You know, we talked about, you know, here at OpenStack, you know, yes. you're building database as a service, so, right. you know, everybody's trying to move up the stack, so, you know, in, in many ways, the infrastructure layer may be, you know, commoditized yeah. in yeah. many ways, but it's yeah. the services on top that are going to deliver the value. Yeah. Yeah, and the services on top is exactly what I'm getting at as well. We're, we're doing it maybe in a different, slightly different way than building a Redshift or building something like uh, App Engine, but our, our customers are telling us they want services on top as well. They come in the form of something like DevOps Automation Service or our MongoDB service that we call Object Rocket, which is a very scalable, very cool platform for MongoDB uh, developers to just take advantage of something that's very turnkey and simple, uh, scales very well. Those are the kinds of services that we're uh, going after as well. We know that commodity infrastructure isn't going to be something you can differentiate on, but we also know that customers aren't quite, quite as price sensitive as people would have you believe because you know, it, when we, we used an analogy in that blog post, you know, it's like comparing apples and apple pie. You know, one's an input and one's an outcome, right? And people, uh, they want an outcome that sometimes people will pay for a better outcome. When it's Super Bowl Sunday and your brand is on the line, are you worried about saving two cents or are you worried about paying up for the right service level that's gonna guarantee a great outcome? You have everything on the line, right? And that's, for a lot of customers, that's worth, worth the difference. And that, that's where we're headed. John, talk about what you guys are doing right now on the business side, that's from a technical perspective, the CTO. I mean, obviously you have a huge business, but you know, putting the Wall Street, not understanding cloud aside, we don't want to go there. Just, it's just <laughs> well, we could if we, later, but I want to just get into your current business as an operator, right. but also we mentioned earlier you've been involved in building OpenStack and, 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 and done all that greatness. Um, how are you guys selling to customers today and how does that relate to what's going on in the OpenStack community? So just to tie that together, connect the dots of right. the work you're doing in OpenStack and how that translates into the business value for you guys. Sure, well OpenStack is a foundation for a few products that we offer. Um, Private cloud is a very popular uh, capability that we bring to the market. Troy mentioned on stage that we've deployed over 100 enterprise private clouds across both Rackspace data centers and customer premises data centers. Uh, we also think about public cloud. You know, that's a huge uh, platform for us as well. It sits very nicely next to a private cloud. A lot of people are talking about hybrid clouds as being sort of the way forward. So we look at hybrid cloud as uh, bringing together disparate technologies, uh, whether it be traditional bare metal servers, uh, VMware servers, private cloud, public cloud, bringing that all together in a seamless 
um, you know, underlying platform. We, had, we did a demo yesterday on a technology that we created that we call Rack Connect, which is the networking technology that orchestrates all of that and makes it feel like one seamless set of resources. And then again, on top of all that, we want to bring a service level and an experience that customers can rely on to make sure they're choosing the right platform, that they're doing the right things to make sure they have great outcomes and great um, success in the cloud, getting the help they need on the platforms that their developers want to use, like MongoDB or Hadoop. We, we rolled out a product recently um, that uses another set of uh, OpenStack technologies with, um, with our Hadoop service. We, we were partnered with Hortonworks on that, but those are the kinds of applications customers want to use. They want help, they want you know, guidance, and they want a great hybrid cloud So platform. give me an example of an enterprise. Just say I'm an enterprise. Okay, I'm a CIO, I'm a dealing with all this. I want, to, I want some of that cloud stuff. I see what Amazon's doing. We probably got some shadow IT and yeah. a bunch of other APIs that they don't even know about. Um, or maybe they have shadow cloud. We were talking about that yesterday. Yeah. There's a new, new concept called shadow Everybody's cloud. Everybody's got that. <laughs> There's a shadow cloud going on. Not shadow IT, a whole cloud. But okay, I'm an on-prem enterprise. Okay, I want to move to the hybrid cloud. I see that as a really nice uh, bridge to, to a fully integrated continuum right. of computing. What do I do? Do I dial up a... You call Rackspace, somebody answers the phone, which is a beautiful thing. <laughs> you know, just try to call the, one of our competitors and see if somebody actually picks up the phone. We always do. We don't even have a system that answers the phone for us. We always pick up the phone. So the point is, you talk to a racker. A racker will help you understand. Uh, they'll try to figure out what you have today. We have a, a team that does... Um, yeah. you know, advisory services, transformation services. Enterprises need help going from where they are to where they'd like to be. Sometimes that means something we would do in their data center alongside. But you want to talk to that customer, I want right? to talk to the customer. You want to talk to the enterprise, yeah. and, hey, you know, we can, you, you're saying Rackspace can deliver value to yes, me. I'm absolutely. an enterprise customer. Yeah, and, and it's, it's all about figuring out, um, you know, kind of the, the needs of that enterprise. It's, if it's a uh, rapid time to market thing, it might be a combination of the public cloud plus something in, a, you know, in, a, in their own data center. If it's, if it's about getting out of the data center business and picking up some workloads, we might move some of their VMware infrastructure over and put that next to a public cloud so they can be agile. Uh, it's really just a, a... All right, so talk about the yeah. customer. One of the things Stu and I have been looking at, and, it's, and this is, I guess, the state of the industry. There's not a lot of customer pimping going on. Yeah, you see some customers up on stage, Disney and Wells Fargo, mm -hmm. which are awesome to share their stories, but there's a lot of folks who aren't sharing because mm -hmm. they're either confidential or not ready to, to talk about it publicly. Um, so share your perspective on that. Why are they doing that? And two, what is the customer environment look like right yeah. now? Still POCs, are they moving to production? Is well, it I hybrid think, cloud? I think a lot of the OpenStack work in the bigger companies, the bigger brand name companies, tends to be with a team that's doing the real innovative stuff. And sometimes that feels to the enterprise like that's the secret sauce. I don't want that team to go leak out everything that they're doing to tell, the, you know, sort of signal to the world what we're building. You know, yeah. I remember one, a couple of, sessions or summits ago, uh, Comcast came out and demoed their new set-top box, and I'm sure uh, you know, they, you know, they showed it on top of the OpenStack platform, but I'm quite sure they don't want to tell all their competitors you know, way so, ahead of time. So you're saying it's competitive building. strategy. I believe it is to some extent. Yeah, also, I, I think also, uh, we're hearing too from other this compliance issues too. They don't necessarily know what this looks like yet, so right. they don't know how to govern it or comply with. For instance, like you mentioned big data, you know, <laughs> big data creates Big privacy issues, big security issues. I mean, yeah, these if are, done wrong, yeah, sure. Well, but it's, uh, it's a whole new ball game, right? Right, right. And this, this new technology, sometimes the, you know, the, if, you, if you look at a very highly regulated industry, they've got years and years of audit standards and practices that they use, and sometimes the new technologies throws those things for a loop. I mean, you have to now uh, audit in a very different kind of a way across a hybrid cloud across di different locations and different clouds. But you don't see customers tentative at this point. No, people people are ready to go. I mean, it, cloud is no longer a uh, if. It's just a it's just a win for com companies. All right. So I got now switched to the OpenStack piece. I mean, you've been you've been there from the beginning. You've been watching it. You know, flower out now, and, and the, the fruits coming off the tree. Mm -hmm. um, there's some low hanging fruit. But I want to talk to you about what you're concerned about and what you're optimistic about. What are you What are you worried about? Obviously, you, you said mentioned earlier you can't control what developers work on, right. especially in, in when it's happening in the open. It just happens. It's its own its right. own folks' autonomy, if you will, and how they behave. So that's one thing you really can't control it. But what do you worry about in the community that uh, from how it will grow? I mean, are you worried about certain projects, Neutron, Solum? I, I worry, no, I don't work at, worry too much about specific projects. I think those things work themselves out when you've got a good community, community sorts that, that out. I think the perceptions, I think, are the things I worry about the most, or misperceptions, people looking in from outside. I've heard it a number of times where they say, look, nobody's making any money on OpenStack. Well, look, nobody made a lot of money on Linux in the early days either, but Linux is a part of everything we do, and now you wouldn't think twice about 
Linux being uh, an important part of our, our business. I mean, you do have to find your angle on how to make money. It's not going to be necessarily uh, a free lunch for anybody. You've got to do some work. You've got to go add some value, um, add it in terms of software that you write. You've got to add it in terms of capabilities that you bring to the table, expertise, something. It's not as if you can take free software off the shelf and you know, turn it into gold with, without doing some uh, bit of work. But, uh, you know, there are people making money with OpenStack. I mean, we're making money with OpenStack. Uh, a number of the other companies out on the floor are making money with OpenStack. So I, I think that's a misperception. Uh, surely there will be some companies that don't make it. Surely little, a little company that, uh, you know, just gets in to try to ride the hype wave and doesn't do much is, is not going to make it. Um, but but very many will, and and there's there's some out there that uh, and there's a lot of fun gets pumped around yes. too. There's a lot of people yeah. betting their business on OpenStack. There right? are people that that We're see OpenStack as a real like threat. <laughs> people that see OpenStack as a real threat, and they'd love to sow the seeds of of uh, you know doubt and uncertainty about yeah. the project. But man, it's it's vibrant community. Forty seven hundred people here every year. It grows. There is no doubt that OpenStack is a, a sure thing in the in the long term. Well, we, we make it our business to look for cracks in the foundation, and we have seen some cracks in the past. Certainly, when it became more of a land grab market, yeah. when you guys kind of stepped back and said, "Hey, you know what? Let's let's get let's let's let code be the vote of, of relevance." Right. That was a huge step, and I think that that shifted the tide to where the community came back and said, "This is too important." Right. I just don't see any cracks in the foundation yeah. at this point. I mean, the Red yeah. Hat news, I'm going to dig into it. Yeah, but that that. If it starts to go into silos, right. then it's going to be a whole community uproar, in my yeah, opinion. I agree. So we're going to watch that. I mean, it, scale out should not be silo based. It right. shouldn't be horizontally uh, scalable. Do you agree? I agree. Um, okay, so um, what's the uh, most exciting thing that you saw in the show? Oh, man, that's a great question. Um, you know, the hard part for me is I don't get to spend as much time on, at the show as I'd like. I spend time with guys like you. I spend time out, out here in the hallways. Uh, but look, the, the buzz is the most exciting thing. The, the work that's going on uh, in, in these sessions, these design sessions back here behind us are, are the most exciting things. The developers getting together and geeking out on the technologies that get them excited, to me, that's, that's it. There's no one thing that I can pick out. Uh, but it, it really is, a, it just, it's just the success of the community. My final question for you, I want you to tell the folks in your own words, I mean Dave Vellante and I and Stu always talk about, we'd love to analyze, but also you know, living in Silicon Valley on my end, we'd love to talk about inflection points and comparing and contrasting this to other things. I want you to share with the folks in your own words, why is this point in time in the technology uh, history and business so compelling, so yeah. radically different than anything before? Uh, it doesn't seem to be one major trend. It seems to be a confluence of many things kind yeah. of coming together. Those tectonic plates are shifting. Well, yeah, it's the big drivers of, of cloud. Yeah, no, it's, certainly it's, uh, you know, mobile is a huge uh, driver of this. Mobile is at the center of everything we do. I walk around with two or three mobile devices. Uh, what am I consuming on that mobile? Uh, probably a software as a service application, probably some big data in that feed somewhere, a social network or two. Um, you know, lots of data coming and going, getting stored somewhere, getting analyzed somewhere. That is the cloud. That is, you know, the, a lot of people uh, try to put their finger on what cloud is, and it's really just the architecture for how we're going to do computing from now on. I mean, there's, uh, there's a team that's trying to reinvent down here, a company that Rackspace acquired called Zero VM, trying to reinvent the platform for the next wave of cloud computing. I mean, people are going to keep iterating and keep inventing technology to make it faster, better, cheaper, uh, and, and easier for developers to build that next wave of technology. And that's what gets me excited. We're, we're reinventing IT right here. I mean, IT used to be this thing that was behind a data center wall, behind closed doors in a different department. Now it is the business. It is the business. I mean, software is the business for so many companies. And if it's not software, it's hardware that's connected to the cloud or something like that. So, I think that's just uh, and developers are at the center of the they opportunity. Are. I mean, it's one of the best times to be a developer oh, right man. now. Oh man! It's just like pick your pick your uh, territory. I mean, you got yeah. mobile, you got data science. I mean, yeah. so much stuff to go on. Absolutely, they're in high demand. Developers are are the, there's a book called the the new kingmakers, and developers are are absolutely <laughs> the new kingmakers because they're they're the guys in the driver's seat. They're the people that are inventing the future, and that's what what uh, that's what's going to 
that's when it's going to get us there. John and Gabe, CTO of Rackspace, great to see you again. You. Um, and then we are here at the OpenStack Summit. You guys, big part of it. Appreciate all the support and congratulations. It's been a great journey to watch you guys and, and continue to have the success. This is the Cube. We've been documenting. We've been there from day one, but this is our second year live broadcasting because it's mainstream. People are pumped. We have yet to see any cracks in the foundation, and certainly we'll, if we see them, we'll report them. But a lot of great news here at OpenStack. John, thanks for joining us. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>